And the next one's real small. You can make it no problem. I am Tawny Marie, and I bring to you the truth and hidden dangers lurking within the spinal cord. I am recording with Dr. Adretti with the Arachnoiditis Foundation, one of the few specialists in arachnoiditis. How does one get arachnoiditis, if you can give us a detail? Well, these days, currently, you know, one can have a meningitis from streptococcus or pneumococcus or whatever. Uh, infectious of uh, viral diseases, but that's, I would say that that's the least of the infections in the brain and the spinal cord. Um, uh, but uh, unfortunately, the majority of the patients at least in my experience uh, and is caused by medical interventions. I mean. From a senior medical two-year member in this forum, in 2011 he posted, so I looked at my bottles of Kenalog today, and to my surprise, the side of the bottle let read in bold letters said, Not for IV, ID, epidural use. This is the same Kenalog 40 made by Bistro Miles Squibb that I've used throughout the years for my epidural injections. By chance, I had an old bottle of this Kenalog sitting around, and it did not have these epidural restrictions. Question mark. And by the way, the item on the bottle's numbers were the same. I spoke to the medical information specialist at Bristol Miles, and here is the story they told me. In June 2011, they changed their packaging information for Kenalog. Epidural administration of this product is not recommended. Reports of serious medical events, include death, have been associated with the epidural use. Adverse reactions, convulsion, depression, emotional instability, euphoria, headache, insomnia, mood swings, neuropathy, paralysis, personality changes, psychiatric disorders, vertigo, arachnoiditis, and meningitis have occurred when used in epidural. The same doctor replies, so this sounds like the same catalog we've been using for years. But now the company has to make it by covering their behinds for saying we warned you not to use it in the epidural space in the event there is any complications. So the liability falls on the shoulders of the treating physician. I guess this could be considered off-label use now? Question mark. Do you guys use any other type of steroids for epidural use? Do other makers now indicate not to use for epidural injections like Depromedrol? Are you guys still using Kenalog? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. From another medical advisor, a senior medical advisor, stated, default dude, bottom line, yes it's off label, yes there are other injectables, no it doesn't make sense, and yes you will have to decide for yourself if you want to keep using it. Dr. Adrede, what does off label mean? Of label that you are using the, uh, uh, for indications that were not approved by the FDA. And I think, you know, if it's a matter of life or death, sure. But just uh, uh, for back pain, uh, it's, it's, it's hazardous, it's dangerous. And yet doctors still choose to go against warning labels knowing it can harm. Have you heard anything that the the FDA has taken action against a doctor that didn't follow that? No. no. Okay. Have it, maybe if he gets into a, uh, a complication and then there's a lawsuit against him, that this can be brought up. But that, that's uh, unusual. No, it's not too often. It, and so they, the, the manufacturer is clear because they put all of those sanctions, this, this, and this, and that. And the patients are still allowing going to the same doctors to get the same medication and, and, and get hurt. Uh, that can, one of the causes of uh, arachnoiditis is the blood patches. If you do a blood patches, uh, we have become so common uh, to treat us. Of course, it seals the hole, but blood goes through the hole. In order to seal it, it goes through the hole to, to form a clot inside of the dura. And 
and so as to plug it. But that allows blood to go into the sewer atmosphere. Blood is extremely um, uh, hazardous to, to the nervous tissue. And uh, if you get an MRI or, or <coughs> an MRI in, in a patient three days after um, they drew a blood patch, you would see blood inside of the, of the dura sac. You know, it's stinks, and uh, gradually the red cells uh, lies, they break down, and eventually the hemoglobin gets dispersed, and that produces arachnoiditis. I would like to start with our viewers of reading an article by the New York Times by John Tannery in 2009. Chronic pain affects over 70 million Americans, which affects more widespread than heart disease, cancer, and diabetes combined. It costs our economy more than $100 billion per year. In his article, he also stated top specialists and doctors of medical boards and panels have urged the Federal Department of Health and Human Services to reaffirm the way doctors are reimbursed for treating pain. Doctors have said that the current system has misaligned incentives encouraging doctors to perform procedures like injections and surgery and that the doctors who perform those procedures could, cost, could make up to 10 times much per an hour than doctors who treated pain in other ways. Distorted incentives and inadequate treatment are hurting patients at the same time they are driving our health care costs, according to this report. Such ineffective and even wasteful treatments for pain is contributing to the rapid rise in health care costs in America. Instead of receiving effective relief, patients with persistent pain often find themselves in an endless cycle seeing multiple health care providers, including specialists in areas other than pain. They often endure repeated tests, inadequate and unproven treatments. This may include unnecessary surgeries, injections, and procedures that have no long-term impact on comfort and function. How many people do you think you have diagnosed with arachnoiditis? Probably, you know, diagnosis that I have seen, uh, that I have reviewed their films to confirm and not just that somebody diagnosed it, to confirm by looking at the radiological films, uh, approximately 4,800. People that are unaware of what they truly suffer, 70 million from the New York Times suffer chronic pain. How many are lurking within our midst? How many people do you think are left unaware that suffer arachnoiditis that have been misled or improperly diagnosed in your medical opinion? Well, that, that's a very good question because a uh, great majority of uh, uh, patients that come have suffered for some years and they have been treated for a variety of, uh, of uh, spinal diseases and, uh, uh, and the diagnosis has not been given or has not been recognized what it is, so even if they have had MRIs and other very much for studies and population in general, but also the medical uh, colleagues with all due respect, I think they, they need to begin to look into that so many of the cases that have injuries, uh, operations, instead of treating with more injections or with more operations, uh, if they have arachnoiditis, uh, and there's a pain that's not going to go away. And with by operation, by injections, so, so it has to be treated differently. Very, very true. Do you think it's as rare as a medical industry has been led to taught and believe? I don't believe so. I think we just have uh, a real uh, inquiry has not been made as far as the number of patients in, in a, let's say, in a location, a city or a county or a state. Nobody is interested in that, especially in the medical profession. Uh, they, they want to know about it. So, uh, I, you cannot imagine the, the, the adversity uh, that I have to overcome a disregard for this disease, mostly because it's caused by physicians. Some doctors still try to give patients with a diagnosis 
to receive injections and surgeries, even knowing they've been impacted with arachnoiditis. Yeah, yeah arachnoiditis would flare up more, if I can use that term. Whenever uh, a needle or a knife enters the dural site, you know. Wow. Dr. Adrede, we went over the article in the New York Times. How do you feel in your medical opinion that arachnoiditis and the 70 million chronic pain sufferers troubling the widespread more than heart disease, cancer, and diabetes combined just in America? Well, I didn't say just great. But, but nevertheless, uh, there are many uh, ep blood, epidural blood patches done every day. Indicate also the number of cases. Uh, if, if they are there are uh, 3 million deliveries of babies in the United States a year. Gross figure. Uh, but 60% uh, uh, of those mothers receive uh, epidural for, for the uh, delivery of the baby. And um, of those, it's accepted that between 2 and 4, and I think it's between 2 and 6%. Develop a dura puncture uh, accidental, and uh, you have to have a blood patch, okay? and and so uh, assuming that that makes it about six thousand or seven thousand women that every year develop arachnoiditis because the the, 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 the penetrated the, the dural sac and then were given uh, a blood patch. Wow! So that that. That's uh, one aspect, in addition to the surgeries and so forth. The, uh, the epidurals are not, unfortunately, you know, well, they might provide good anesthesia, but, but it is not good. But yet doctors still say it's rare and impossible to happen. How do you feel when you hear that? Well, it certainly it's is not impossible. It is very, very uh, too much possible. Yeah, but you know, I there really my numbers are just from you no know, sources that are not precise. But you know, in my, uh, I think the number of births and uh, the number of the percentage of, of women that deliver under epidural anesthesia, and then there are statistics indicating what percentage of those get dural punctures, and then given a, a, a epidural blood patch. Yeah, that's a, it's a rough figures, but they are approximate. Yeah, that's not accounting for people that aren't accounted for or keeping accounting yeah, of. Like in the wars, you know, you know, they, you don't, know, they you don't, don't keep track of every person. Uh,